Hi everyone, and welcome back to Proximity.Fun, although I guess you could call this episode Proximity.NotFun, or .Sad, but uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play some nice soothing background stock footage here for you guys to kind of help lighten the blow and, and put you guys in a little bit of a better mood. So here's what happened. Yesterday at about 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, Google announced that they would be shutting down nearby notifications on Android devices. Put simply, this means that the way that the vast majority of people use Bluetooth beacons in their proximity marketing campaigns simply isn't going to work anymore. And I feel like this would be a good time to remind you that I have an NFC training program for sale, so if you guys want to check that out, link's in the description. Now, I've seen a ton of questions and a lot of very concerned people out there, so in this video what I'd like to do is answer as many of those questions as I can, and then at the end I want to give you guys my thoughts on what I think should happen after. So. First, notifications are being shut down on December 6th. Google said that there was just too much spam in the system. You know, talk about why you think that is. And they decided that it just wasn't worth saving, and so it's gone. Now, this really surprised a lot of people just because it's not a lot of time to make those adjustments. People have really invested a lot of money, like, like some of the people that I've consulted for have invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in beacons over the last couple of years. And the thing is that Google's really bad at communicating with its users about these kinds of changes. Some of you may have heard of like the YouTube adpocalypse that seems to happen every few months, where YouTube, which is a Google property, decides to just up and change its entire monetization system, or its recommendation system, or its ranking system, or any of these other systems that YouTubers depend on for their entire livelihoods. They decide to change it without any notification, without any warning, and without any explanation. They just it's gone, it's changed, and people's entire lives can be ruined. In fact, I know several YouTubers who have lost their entire businesses just because Google decided to update a couple things in their algorithm, and they stopped getting traffic. So while I definitely wasn't expecting something like this to happen, the way that they did announce it really wasn't a huge surprise. So the next question is whether or not these notifications will show up at all. And the answer to that is yes, they will still show up, but in order for that notification to show up, then you need to have an app installed on your phone very, very similar, in fact, exactly the same way that the iPhone systems currently work. So the idea is that you would have an app for Walmart, right? The Walmart app would then include the Bluetooth beacon, the Eddie Stone APIs or the SDKs. I'm still not really sure what the difference is between the two of them, but it would include that bit of Google programming in order for the notifications to then show up on the user's phone. Google is leaving the APIs and the SDKs and everything else available for developers to incorporate that information into their apps so they can add that functionality back into these other apps. And I think that's really important, and that's something I'm going to talk about here in just a minute. But if you are using any sort of app right now to communicate with your beacons or to retrieve information from your beacons, that's going to continue working. The only thing that's changing is that nearby notifications will no longer show up natively on a user's phone. The other thing to keep in mind is that NFC still works. It's built on a completely different system, it's totally independent, and since Apple has finally decided to add native NFC functionality to their phones, I think that this is going to be the best, easiest, and fastest transition for the majority of people who are only using beacons right now. And again, we have our little course, it's $97, it covers everything from um, sourcing your NFC tags, like where to buy them, to how to program them, which is actually really easy, 
and then how we're using them in a couple of different kinds of projects. So again, links to that in the description if you want to check that out. But to say that the Beacon Management folks are freaking out would be a bit of an understatement. Like I can't tell you the number of phone calls and the Skype conversations and the Facebook Messenger chats that I've been involved over the last 30 hours, but it's been a lot and it's really causing a lot of people a lot of heartache. And the biggest question that these folks then have is how do we move forward? What's the next step? I think that there are two main courses of action here. I think that there are two main options. The first is simply transitioning to NFC. It's not complicated. The functionality and the role that NFC plays in proximity marketing is very similar to what we do with the beacons. Really, the only difference is the range that they have. So instead of having something that can broadcast 400 meters, which always seemed kind of crazy to me, then instead you're talking about half an inch. So the idea is that instead of using it as an advertising tool, instead of blasting a message to everybody within a square mile, then instead what you would be doing is you would be working on an individual basis to improve the user's experience while at that location. So that can be things like maps for a shopping mall, that can be things like digital menus, that can be things like you know tap your phone here in order to receive a free drink, and things along those lines. So it's going to be a little bit different. I think the messaging and the systems that have been built are going to be the same or are going to require very little tweaking in order to be adapted for the NFC market. But the thing that is going to require the most change and the most adaptation is going to be the way that we are communicating and the message that we're presenting to our end customer, to the person who's actually going to be scanning the device and adding their information onto the website. That also means that we're going to require more printed material in order to help visually call people's attention and get them to tap their phone on the NFC so that way they can take advantage of the offers that we're trying to present to them. And we actually have some interesting news on that. I'm not sure how much of it I can share, but there's a gentleman who has a print shop and who has been actively working to acquire and source NFC products. So think of it like the Moo Plus cards, only better with more options and probably going to be less expensive. So we're very excited about that. The second option or the second course that I can see a lot of people taking is to simply hold off on their Beacon stuff for a month or two months while we wait for these Beacon app builders to come out to the marketplace. Now, I've actually seen a couple of these being worked on, and I hope to be able to share some information on these as soon as possible. I, I'm under NDA, so I can't really talk about a lot of it quite yet, but, but I think that this is going to be a very viable option, especially if we can get those app builders at a relatively low cost and if we can get them white label. So they were this way. Think you have a hotel, right? You can build an app for that hotel, and then everybody who is at the hotel, if they want to get access to extra information, if they want to get access to room service or local tourist attractions or whatever, then all they need to do is download the app and they have access to all the beacons. And as they go out and they visit all the different tourist attractions, then you can actually place the hotel's beacons at those locations in order to have them take advantage of the special offers. So for example, if you're working with a hotel, you can tell them, hey, charge Joe's Dairy. No, that's not the name of a restaurant. You can have them charge Joe's restaurant that's down the street um, two, three hundred bucks a month in order to promote them to their customers, right? And so, or and to also give you guys like a coupon code for a free drink because drinks usually have a profit margin of like 95%. So they're giving you spending like two or three cents, maybe five cents in order to acquire every single email that they'd be receiving. And that's an insane rate. Plus, you never buy just a drink, you always get a drink and fries and you know, all this other stuff. So you charge the hotel, the hotel charges the restaurant. And then you take that beacon, you place it in the hotel, say, hey, if you guys are looking for something for dinner, then go check out Joe's restaurant. And then you can go over to Joe's restaurant. And then once they're at Joe's restaurant, their phone rings again and says, hey, if you'd like to get a free drink with your meal, then just enter your email address here. And then that way the restaurant gets to grow their email list, the hotel gets to grow their email list, and then you get to grow that email list and you can then promote that to other people and promote other offers to them in the future. Holy crap, I'm talking really fast. But I get excited about this kind of stuff. But there's a lot of money to be made in this. Like if you have 10 different restaurants in the area that's the hotel's going to be promoting, they charge them 250 bucks a pop. They're going to be making an extra $2,500 a month just off of the promotion. You can easily charge them $2,500 a month for that. They get all the services for free, plus all the extra stuff that you'll be adding to it, like the email list and everything else. And then they get all their money back. Everything that they're spending you know, out of pocket is going to come back from those restaurants. And 10 restaurants in an area isn't a lot. That's like three pizza places, three Italian places, three Mexican places, and I don't know, a Dairy Queen. And 250 bucks a month for something like that with a hotel that typically has 
between two and three hundred rooms that's a lot of traffic that you'd be able to push towards those other locations so just something to play with and that's just another way you can use the bluetooth beacons with an app and if you want to go really crazy don't go to the hotel go to your local chamber of commerce and you can set up the same system for everybody and you can charge everybody to be on this system and then that's how you can start building out your smart cities that's how you can start doing a whole bunch of different things and that's one of the things that we're working on right now so uh, it's definitely really interesting but again the idea is to build apps for specific businesses or for a specific area and let users just download them in order to interact with the beacons and interact with the information that's available like I said, we've been looking at this for quite a while, especially for our zoos and our museums. We just wanted something that's a little bit more stable and not so dependent on Google deciding whether or not to show the notifications. Because it, it kind of looked bad if a kid goes up to look at the penguins and the penguin notification doesn't show up because it wasn't getting a high enough click-through rate and then Google decides not to show it. So it's something that we've been looking at for a little while now. But I think that those are the two best courses of action moving forward. Now, as far as my thoughts about the whole thing, uh, I've kind of mentioned them already. I think, you know, the NFC is going to be really big. I think that's going to be very, very important that people start working with NFC. I think that the opportunities that we have available to us using apps and Bluetooth beacons together, I think there's a lot of potential there. But the other thing that I feel kind of obligated to say, and I'm not trying to talk trash about any of the other companies that are out there or anybody else. This is just, just an observation that I'd like to share. Use caution when listening to anybody talking about any sort of miraculous or magical solution for these notification issues. A lot of these businesses, myself included, have invested a lot of money, millions of dollars, in this technology, and everything has just kind of disappeared over the last 24 hours. Now, I'm not saying that people aren't telling the truth, only that things may not be exactly as they appear. Uh, for example, there's one company, and again, I'm not naming any names, but uh, I just watched one of their live streams, and they're talking about how instead of notifications showing up as you know, notifications on the user's phone, then instead they're going to show up as ads on the user's apps or websites or whatever it is that they go out to visit. So like if they're scrolling through Twitter, then they're going to see, you know, your ad pop up because you're in the area. And really all it is is Google Display Ads. Like, that's it. It's not anything crazy. It's not anything magical. But they made it sound like, oh, we're these visionaries. We saw this coming and we've been working on a solution that just so happened that we have the solution right as Google's making this big change. And so everybody else is screwed, but all the people who are working with us, you guys are all the smart ones. You're the intelligent ones. And, you know, we have the solution. And so like everybody else is surprised and they're panicking. They don't know what to do, but we're, we're all set. We've got this magic solution and, you know, we're visionaries. And the thing is, it's just a Google display ad. It's nothing like it's been around for a long time. Like, sure, it just came out of beta a couple months ago, but we've been using it for our own clients and we've had really good results from it. That's great. But it has absolutely nothing to do with beacons. It has absolutely nothing to do with proximity marketing. They might be geo-targeting those ads, which is great. You should be doing that anyways, but they're going to be charging you extra to set up these kinds of ads and they're going to be charging you per impression. They're going to charge you per click. And you can just go into Google and you can set it up yourself and save a ton of money. And the thing is, I've seen like five different live streams like this over the last 24 hours. I've seen all these companies coming out and being, no, 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 we're not the ones who are screwed up. We're not the ones who are in trouble. We're visionaries. And they're offering these BS solutions. And so again, I'm not immune to this. You know, you guys probably think the same thing about what I'm saying with the NFC or waiting for the apps. You're totally entitled to your opinion. I could be very mistaken. Who knows? Maybe they'll come out tomorrow and say, oh, by the way, we're killing NFC and also so is the iPhone. And then, I don't know, I'll retire and take care of vehicles or something. But I think the thing that really bugged me the most about these presentations is I couldn't believe how many people were just eating this stuff up. Like, they just couldn't believe it. Like, oh, wow, you guys are amazing. We're ahead of the curve. We're, you know, we're so lucky to be with... with this company instead of that company, everybody else, they just look dumb and they feel really dumb right now. But not a single person recognized it as a display ad. And I was sitting here thinking, I was like, how can it possibly be that these people who are so supposedly involved in proximity marketing don't even know about Google ads? Like this is kind of a big deal and it's a very simple thing. How is it they don't know about this? How do, how do they not recognize this? And I was thinking, you know, a lot of these MLM style businesses, they're not targeting marketers. They're not really trying to serve real customers and real clients. They just want to get more people to sign up 
and they want to get them to go and get their friends to sign up and then they just start making their money the pyramids and whatever and you know they're not serving real customers and since none of them have ever actually done any of this stuff then they didn't know what it was they're looking at and then we sit back here and we think huh how could they shut this program down over spam but then we see stuff like this and it kind of makes a little bit more sense holy bananas that was a long rant i still got more coming though the second thing that and i know i've mentioned this a few times is that beacons should form part of your overall marketing strategy and your package right what it is that you offer to your clients they should be one of several different traffic sources that includes things like seo like social media display ads which apparently are magic and things like that of course beacons never were silver bullets and they probably shouldn't have been treated that way and even with beacons going away then we can actually still provide leads to all of our clients and we're not even going to notice a huge difference we just take the resource that we're going into the beacons and you know we'll put them in ads for the next couple of months and see how it goes and that's really important because again our goal here as marketers is to help our customers make more money and having everything rely on just a single source of traffic like this that's not good business but you guys probably already noticed that <coughs> and third i'm going to try and end this on a positive note proximity marketing or more specifically bluetooth beacons i think are going to be much more effective for our larger clients and deployments compared to the mom and pop retail shops or smaller restaurants and things like that. I think those smaller businesses will still benefit very greatly from NFC and from the other kinds of marketing that we can provide for them. But for the big stuff like your smart city projects, your large retail chains, malls, theme parks, and all that kind of stuff, they're still going to benefit very greatly from Bluetooth beacons. And you're going to have access to a lot more of that functionality by attaching them to an app. And that usually means that we'll be able to charge a lot more for it. Now, I think that's something that we're going to have to sit back and wait and see how things turn out. But in my opinion, I think this could actually be a good thing in the long term because first off, we're going to be getting rid of the vast majority of the crappy sellers that are out there. And we'll be able to charge more to these larger clients because first off, they're larger. And second, because they're going to be getting a lot more value out of what it is that we're offering. Now, personally, I'm going to be shifting most of my clients over to NFC. And my own projects like the smart city stuff, the tourist attractions, there's going to be a combination of NFC and then the beacon enabled apps as soon as those become available. And the last question I like to answer and one that I'm still kind of wondering myself is what I'm going to do with this channel. You guys may not be wondering that, but if you watch it to the end of this video and I'm already at 30 minutes of recording time, it's going to be edited down like crazy, but you might be wondering that too. So I fear that the beacon news is probably going to be quiet for a while while everybody's working on these app builders. I think there's still going to be a lot of interest and a lot of people who are going to need information about NFC. And so I'm probably going to be spending a lot of time working on that. I think I'm going to cut back on the newsletters for a while and just focus more on those tutorials. And then, of course, keep you guys as updated as I can about these other developments as they come out. The other thing that we're going to be adjusting is the content of our proximity marketing course. Uh, we want that to focus a lot more on NFC and we're going to remove the nearby related content. Now, I'm also going to be adding some additional sections to this just to kind of help you guys avoid these kinds of problems in the future. So we're going to be adding in a couple of sections on other ways to drive traffic to these websites and to generate leads for your clients. So we're going to be talking some basic SEO tutorials. We're going to be talking about Google My Business. We're going to be talking about ads. We're going to be talking about YouTube. And these are my favorite ways of generating traffic to these pages. So keep an eye out for that in the next couple of weeks. And if you guys have already bought the big package, you know, the big main course, then you're going to get all this extra content at no extra cost. And again, we do have the mini course available right now on the NFC. If you guys want to check that out, if you want to learn more about how that works, it is pretty in-depth and it does cover everything that you need in order to get started with NFC. And I'm pretty happy with it, but we are going to need to add in this other information so that way, uh, you know, you guys aren't blown away in the wind of Google's changes because if that were the case, like, Google updates, like the Google search engine, something like 400 times a year. YouTube goes to like 200 different updates a year. And so it's important to diversify as much as possible. So, so I think that'll do it for this video. Sorry, I don't have better news for you guys, um, but definitely look into these other two options. Like I said, the NFC and the app builders, I think that's going to be the next step or the next phase of evolution for proximity marketing and keep your chins up. We still have a lot of options, a lot of possibilities, and there's still a lot of people out there who need the services that we're trying to provide. So just keep that in mind. Um, but that'll do it for me. My name's Tristan from Proximity.Fun. Have yourselves an excellent day, a great weekend, or at least as best as you can. And I'll be back here on Monday with some new videos and some training for you guys. See you then. Bye.